Hello everyone and welcome to another JavaScript Mastery video. In this video, we are going to talk about one of the fundamental topics in JavaScript and that is equality. This video is just a small part of the complete path to JavaScript Mastery course. Make sure to stick around until the end of the video for a special limited time surprise. Enjoy! In this video, we are going to talk about concepts of strict versus loose equality in JavaScript. Equality is a fundamental concept in JavaScript. We say two values are equal when they have the same value. So if I scroll down there, we can again play with some console logs. So if I say console log, and then in there, let's say that we have a value of five. We can say, as we learned, double equal to five, these two values are indeed equal. We can also check whether two strings are equal. So for example, if I create a string called hello, and if I make it equal to another string called hello, just like that, we get true and true. We can also switch these to strict equality with triple equal signs, and we do get true, true one more time. Note that we use three equal signs to represent this concept of equality in JavaScript. JavaScript allows us to also test loose equality. It is written using two equal signs. Things may be considered loosely equal, even if they refer to different values that look similar. An example would be the following. In here, let's say that instead of two number fives, we have a five, and then we have a string that has a number five in it. So remember, this is not a number, although it may look like a number, this is a string. And if we now test that with double equality, we get true, which is extremely weird because those two values shouldn't be the same. This is the number and this is a string. With triple equal sign or with strict equality, we get a false and that's how it should be. Let's explore both loose equality and strict equality in more detail. First, we're going to talk about strict equality. The strict equality method of comparison is a preferred option to use because its behavior can be easily predicted, which leads to less bugs and unexpected results. The JavaScript interpreter compares the values as well as their types and only returns true when both are the same. So let's write that down. Compares values and types. We can say data types, right? Because we learned about that. Compares values and data types. Returns true only if both are the same. So it compares both values and data types. If we try doing a console log, inside of which we have a value of 20, for example, and we want to check the strict equality with a string of 20. This is going to be false because even though the values seem to be the same, they are of different types. The first one is of type string and the second one is of a type number. We write loose equality using double equal sign. So again, if we take the example from the strict equality, console.log, and then we do 20 is going to be equal to double equal sign because loose equality to the string of 20, we are going to get true. It does the same underlying logic as the strict equality, except for a minor yet huge difference. The loose equality doesn't compare data types. So let's write that here. Doesn't compare data types. You should almost never use the loose equality. Douglas Crockford in his excellent book called JavaScript, the good parts wrote, JavaScript has two set of equality operators, the good ones. So let's write that there, the good ones, which are going to be triple equal and not strict, not equal. And then we have the evil twins, which are going to be loose equal and loose, not equal. The good ones work the way you would expect. If the two operands are of the same type and have the same value, then strict equality produces true and strict inequality produces false. The evil twins do the right thing when the operands are of the same type, but if they are of different types, 
they attempt to change the values. The rules by which they do that are complicated and unmemorable. These are some of the interesting cases which could cause errors in your applications. So let's see. We're going to have an empty string and a string with a zero in it. And then we have the loose equality. What do you think we are going to get? Before we save it, we're going to remove this console log and let's save it. As you can see, we get false because this is not correct. But what if we did something like zero, which is not a string, and then compare that to an empty string, which is a string that doesn't have anything in it. So we said this is false. And if we save this, we get true. Like how can we even get true with these two values? That doesn't make any sense. Let's test with something else. So let's do console log and then zero is going to be equal to a string of zero. Again, with loose equality, let's test it out. We should get true. Yeah, we do get true. Also weird, shouldn't happen. Let's test a few more examples. Console log and then in there, let's do false, which is a Boolean and compare that to false, just a basic string that includes false. Do you think this is going to be true or false? Try to answer with me. Let's test it out. We get false. Again, doesn't make any sense. You might, you might have said it's going to be true, but it returned false, which is again, weird. Let's try one more thing. So let's do false is going to be equal to, let me just uncomment this. So Boolean of false is going to be equal to a string of zero. Oops, for some reason it returns true. There are hundreds more examples where the evil twins produce unexpected results. That's not good and that could cause errors. So let me just show you a few final tests and then we can repeat what we learned. Let's do console log. True is going to be double equal to one. We talked about the Boolean value of true, right? We said, yeah, that means like something is true, something is correct. And we can also say that's one opposed to zero. With the loose equality, if we save that, we indeed do get true. But again, we said this is a data type of Boolean and this is a data type of number. They shouldn't be the same. But the true gets converted to one and then it compares it. What if we try doing again the same thing, a string of five with a number of five, we also get true, even though they're not of the same data type. That happens because the string of five is converted to the number of five and then compared. But if we switch to using the strict equality, as we always should, we get false false because these two values are not the same and they should never be. With loose equality, both of these are equal and that should never happen. Five is a string and should be treated like that. As I mentioned, most of the JavaScript developers completely avoid loose equality and rely only on the strict equality. It is considered a better practice and it causes less bugs. From now on, you're going to see me only use the strict equality. And for the end, I found for you a great visual representation of strict versus loose equality. In here, we have a table and in the table, you can see on the top row, we have some values, true, false, one, zero, minus one, and so on. And we have them in the column as well. And in here, each dot tries to compare with double equal currently, the value from the row to the value from the column. True when compared to true is going to be true, correct. That's with the double sign. As you can see with loose equality, we get these green boxes all over the place. They are unpredictable. But if we switch to strict equality right there at the top, we get this nice predictable line. So what's the moral of the story? Right there at the bottom corner, always use triple equal sign or strict equality. If you found this video useful and if you'd like to fully master JavaScript, I have some good news for you. For a limited time, as a thank you gift for coming to the end of this video, I prepared for you a special discount code you can use right now to get $50 off the complete path to JavaScript mastery. The code is JSM underscore YT underscore squad. If you decide to buy it, see you inside of the course. If not, don't worry, I'll still keep posting quality and free YouTube tutorials. See you in the next one.